Theodore felt an even worse feeling than before. The feeling that there was nothing he could do about it. Nothing. Except go home. The following morning, all the tugs headed off to work again. Oliver came rumbling right up behind Theodore as if he'd been waiting for him. Theodore put on his friendliest face and slowed down for Oliver to catch up. This time, he was determined to make friends with the new tub. But Oliver gave Theodore a great big bump in the back. It took his breath away with a push. Theodore just couldn't believe Oliver had bumped him again. Sure, other tugs had bumped him before, but it was always meant to be fun. This bump really hurt. Hey, you gonna cry now? Said Oliver in a laughing voice. Theodore tried to make a brave face. No. He finally managed to say. But inside he was still shaking. And that's when Oliver backed up and bumped him again. Even harder this time. Ow! Theodore couldn't help but cry out loud. He gathered his courage and turned towards the bigger tug. Don't do that. I don't like it. Well... Oliver backed up as if he was going to give Theodore another bump. He said he doesn't like that. It was George. He'd been watching the whole thing. Leave my friend alone, shouted George. Oliver kept on staring straight at Theodore, as if George wasn't even there. I guess a little tug like you needs other tugs to fight for him. He said in a voice that made Theodore feel very, very small. We don't need you at all in this harbor, rumbled George. I can move Owen as well as you can. Why don't you just go home? Oliver just turned and floated off toward his dock as if he had all the time in the world. Theodore wondered when he would see Oliver again. And he wondered, what if George wasn't there the next time? That afternoon, when Theodore was finished work, he set off for home. Each little sound he heard made his engine skip a beat. He was sure Oliver would race out from behind every corner and bump him. Oh, no, groaned Theodore. It was Oliver. Deep inside him said. Theodore started to cross the harbor, out of the way of Oliver. He could almost hear those awful words again. Little tug, little tug. No, I'm not going to float away. Theodore turned back towards Oliver and rumbled his engine as if to say, I'm not afraid of you. But Oliver kept on coming straight towards him. Theodore knew that Oliver was going to bump him again. I'll, I'll bump him back, thought Theodore, and he got ready. But at the very last moment, Theodore decided to turn and float away. Then Oliver began to chase him. Theodore could almost feel the big tug's bumpers on his back. His engine pounded deep in his hull as he raced away. also quick and clever. Theodore hurried under Owen the oil rig to hide. Oliver looked and looked, but couldn't see Theodore anywhere. Theodore turned off his engine and tried not to breathe, tried not to make even the tiniest sound. out there somewhere waiting for him well even from way up there 
Owen can tell that all was not right with Theodore. What's the matter, Theodore? He called down. Oh, nothing, replied Theodore, trying not to sound afraid. Uh, that new tug is just unfriendly. Yes, he is very unfriendly, agreed Owen. Uh, you want me to talk to him for you? No, I, I don't need you to, replied Theodore in his biggest voice. I'm not a little tug. Theodore searched and searched for reasons why Oliver didn't like him. Maybe it, well, maybe it is because I'm not big enough. Theodore had never felt so alone. I always make friends with everyone. Finally, when it was very dark and very late, and the harbor was very, very still. Theodore floated out from his hiding place and hurried home to the great ocean dock. All the other tugs were fast asleep. Theodore? Who's there? Theodore was so startled he nearly jumped out of his bumpers. Oh, it was the dispatcher. Theodore, said the dispatcher. Where have you been? I've been waiting up for you. I've been uh, I'm just uh, out, replied Theodore. Well, said the dispatcher, you'd better get some sleep now. Tomorrow is a busy day. Tomorrow, thought Theodore. The thought of another day hiding from Oliver made him feel sick. Suddenly, Theodore knew what he had to do. Um, uh, can I ask you something? Yes, Theodore, said the dispatcher. Theodore took a deep breath and told the dispatcher all about Oliver the bully. First, I tried to make friends, explained Theodore. And then, I was going to bump him back, but I guess, well, I couldn't. I'm very proud of you, Theodore, said the dispatcher in a gentle voice. You, you are? said Theodore, surprised. But, but I didn't do anything. I'm glad you didn't try and deal with this bully by yourself, the dispatcher went on. I think that would have only made things worse. Yes, yes, I, I guess you're right, agreed Theodore. Now, Theodore, I won't always be able to help you, said the dispatcher with a smile in his voice. But this time, I think I can. dispatcher sent Oliver, the ocean tug, back home. He gave Theodore another big job, moving Shelburne to Sea Barge. And George, well, George was given the job to move Owen out to the ocean. Good morning, Owen, said Theodore. Good morning, George. Good morning, Theodore, called George. See you soon. Yes, sir, Bob, boomed Owen. Theodore just loved saying good morning to everyone in the big harbor. It was such a, a warm, wonderful feeling. A feeling that everyone on the whole ocean was his friend. Well, I'm glad Theodore took care of that problem with the bully. Oh, what got me started on that bully problem? Oh, of course, my models. I guess it's time that I put them away now. Put this over. Oh, I missed this one. Oh. oh, this fellow always had great stories to tell. Oh, and this fellow. Oh, he was always trying to make us laugh. What a clown. Oh, he's always chasing everybody all around the place. Well, thanks for visiting us here in the Big Harbor. We'll see you all again next time. And we'll see you all again next time, too.